Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and in this video I'm going to show you guys what's new in the Photoshop CC 2017 update. So if you guys didn't know, Adobe just released an update for pretty much all of its apps in the Creative Cloud lineup. And in this video I'm going to show you guys some of the cool new features added to Photoshop. So let's open up Photoshop CC 2017 and I'll show you guys some of the newest additions. So it's still got this new visual recent file screen that's been present since the last update. But if you click on new document, you now have the option to select between a bunch of different presets and templates. So if you, you can see all your recent documents that you opened, or you can go to photo and you get some different photo presets like landscape. And also underneath the presets, you see templates and these are linked with Adobe stock. And there's some free ones and I'm sure there's some premium ones too, but there's a bunch of free ones like poster mockups, Polaroid picture templates, and as you scan through the different presets like print, art and illustration, web, you'll see different preset templates and layouts for all of these that are linked with Adobe Stock. Now you can open these blank preset documents or as always you can type in your own parameters and create a document of the pixel size that you want. Just to show you guys, I actually downloaded one of these free templates for the film mockup and I'll open it up to show you guys what it looks like. So here's an example of one of their mockup templates and you can see everything's neatly organized into folders and effects that you can turn on and off and then just insert your photo into these templates. Another pretty cool new feature is the Photoshop search bar. So if you click on this search icon in the top right, it'll open up a search bar or you can go to edit search or use the shortcut command F. Now in this Photoshop search bar, it's pretty much like any other search bar except this one just searches the Photoshop and kind of creative cloud world. So let's say I want to find the lasso tool. So if I type in lasso, it'll automatically show me all the different tools. So I have the lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool, and it also shows me the shortcut next to it. Now aside from just clicking on the tool and now having it selected, you can also search for lasso tutorials. So if you go to the learn section, these are all linked with Adobe's help website that has its kind of pre-made nice little tutorials and explanations of different little tools. Also, you can search Adobe stock for lasso images. And some of these are free, some of these are premium based on your subscription membership to Creative Cloud. So that's the search feature, pretty cool one. You can't quite find a, a tool, but you want to find it like the pen tool or whatever you're looking for. So let's find the type tool. All right, and I'll show you guys some of the new type features. So Adobe now has support for SVG fonts and characters. So SVG fonts allow gradients and colors right within the text glyph. And Photoshop ships with Trajan Color, which is an example of an SVG font. So I'll type out hello, and you can see it's got the gradient and color right in it without any blending options. And I can also click and highlight it and select some different color options. However, this also means that there's emoji support. So you should see this new font called Emoji 1, and now you can scroll through these different emoji glyphs and click on them to add them to your document. And especially for those of you who like to add emojis to your YouTube thumbnails and things like that, this is a great addition to have so you don't have to go searching Google for emojis to paste into your document. Another cool new feature available in the 2017 update is more improvements to the liquify tool. So if you open filter liquify, you should see this new face aware liquify and it recognizes different facial features and allows you to adjust them without selecting them. And it even splits them up into left and right size. So under the eyes menu now, I can adjust the eye size of just the left eye and you can see it going up and down or the eye height. And I can also do that with the right eye as well and adjust them individually. So this is a cool way to fix things, or I guess if you want, make goofy, weird characters. But they have a, a slider for all the features so that you could really retouch a portrait or facial features, look smiling, frowning, and do them without messing things up with the liquify tool. So now that we've moved around this guy's facial features, there's also some new improvements to the select and mask tool. So if you guys aren't familiar with the Select and Mask tool, it's Photoshop's new menu that you can find under any of these selection tools. So let's grab the Quick Selection tool and let's say we were making a quick selection like normal and I press Select and Mask. 
This is similar to Photoshop's Refine Edge feature in older versions, but it's kind of taking over that menu. And now they've added the lasso tool right within this menu. So a lot of times if you'd go overboard with some of your selections, like this, and you wanted to clean it up, you can go to the lasso tool, work on minus to selection mode, and then clean things up right within the tool, which is something I found myself actually doing, so I'm glad they put it right in the menu. So that's the select and mask menu, a whole separate thing, but they just added the lasso tool in there so you have an easier workflow. Now another new addition Photoshop made is adding a few new control options in the properties menu. So if you're working with a text layer, normally to adjust things you'd have to go to window character and open up the paragraph and character panel. However, now you should see some options to adjust things right within the properties menu such as size, text alignment, color, and font. And Photoshop's reasoning for this is just to create a smoother workflow without having to go to too many windows at once unless you want to do more advanced adjustments. There's also some other smaller hidden gems like if you go to Photoshop preferences and select general, you can now adjust some things about the interface like the highlight color. They've added a blue option so you see on this layer panel it used to be the default lighter gray but now if you want you can make it highlight blue which I suppose I'll try it out and see if I like it for now. On top of all these new features and functionalities there is also many more smaller improvements to the performance in general, improvements to certain filters, and accessibility and linking with Creative Cloud and different libraries. So I'll leave a link to Photoshop's full release notes in the description below if you guys want to check out all the smaller details. But these are some of the most major new updates and cool new features for you to check out and play around with. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like on it below. Let me know what features you think look cool or what do you think about these new features. And if you're new, definitely check out some of the playlists on my channel for more Photoshop tutorials and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all new future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.